Hi guys, this is Gregor Tarjan, Aero Yacht, and I'm gonna do a little walkthrough video of this uh, beautiful uh, Neil 43 that I've just delivered. I'm in La Rochelle, and um, we're gonna do a little uh, talking while I while I film this boat. Yeah, this uh, Neil 43 will come to uh, America, and uh, she's she was delivered about a week ago. You can see here how high both of the of the amas are sticking out of the water. I like the um, the way they organized the storage of the life raft. This boat is going to Maryland to Haver the Grace. Clever dinghy storage, high enough to not be impeded by any waves. Very clean deck. You can see that there are no there are no hatches here. We have now put the, um, the Batilin sunscreen on the outside to um, cut down a little on the, um, on the uh, uh, solar radiation and heat. But normally with this overhanging coach roof, you don't have this issue too much. But you can see just similar as the uh, 47, how high the knuckles are out of the water. So this is a light boat, more of a performance oriented cruiser twin head sail rig. This has two overlapping sails, a stay sail and a Genoa. You can order these boats with a carbon rig, although quite honestly, the aluminum mast and good sails uh, drive this boat very, very well. Now we're gonna board. The difference between the 43 and the 45, or even the 47, is that this boat the um, the living accommodations are 90% in the on the main in the main hull and on the main deck. So here you have um, <clears throat> the full cockpit enclosure, which is an option. Let's do the outside first, I guess. Here we have access to a little storage area. There's a storage area. Um. The starboard side, here you have the, um, the furling lines, both for the uh, Genoa and for the stay sail. They run forward. Of course, you can take them around this winch here and then lead them to the helm station where at least one electric winch can, can furl it in. This boat has the electric winch and a, um, and a line drive winch, which we'll get to a little later. So I'm 6'2", and I'm standing underneath this handy helm station bimini. Good view onto the sails. Good view forward. Good view aft. So a good 360 degree view. I would personally always come starboard too. This will get you used to the single engine control. Here you have a beautiful um, chart plotter by by uh, B and G. Here you have the repeater. This is your anchor windlass. You can remotely haul and um, deploy the anchor from the helm station. This is your um, bow thruster, engine control, engine on. This is your electric winch, the, the main winch that actually operates most of these lines here that are on a battery of clutches. This is your line drive winch, which operates the topping lift. And so the topping lift, which is the gray line back here, operates the deployment of the dinghy. So a single person can do this with a remote control on the aft deck. Here you have the uh, a twin main sail system, a twin sheeting system for the main. Um, green and red of course port and starboard so let's start right here actually let's start from left to right this blue line is your genoa sheet the port genoa sheet you can see it going all the way to the to the genoa the, the first the first head sail over there then we have the port stay sail sheet then we have your starboard stay sail sheet the blue one is the starboard genoa sheet Again, this is your topping lift that goes to the line drive. We can uh, 
you can deploy it in or out, unlike a winch which only goes in. This goes in and out, so it's a flat winch. This is basically a winch, but it's flat. And then you have the battery of, um, of clutches here, starting from the left. This is your port main sheet, starboard main sheet. You have your two reefs, the first reef and the second reef on the luff. This is your main halyard. So it basically this sheet goes right on this winch when you want to uh, raise the mainsail. Uh, your luff reefs, number one and number two. This is your spinnaker halyard. So even the spinnaker you can hoist and lower right from the helm station. No need to go up front on this boat. And this is your staysail halyard. So this basically sums up all the, all the sail controls and all the controls here. I can stand very comfortably at the wheel. The wheel is a, um, a Dyneema drive, so it has no hydraulics or, 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 K or, or, or stainless cables. Um, here we do a little 360, a very comfortable bench. This, of course, the, the little cushion is missing, which is all standard. But, you know, at least three people have room on this, on this bench. So moving forward, the nice thing about this boat is also there are no shrouds. The 47 has the shrouds coming from the side up. This actually, the chain plates are integrated in the roof. So you don't have to sort of scooch by the boat. You can basically use them as a, as a nice hand, handrail. Uh, very, very well stayed mast. You can see the lower, the lower shroud goes right to the hounds of the stay sail and the upper shroud goes to the hounds of the forestay of the Genoa. So a single spreader rig, your radar is up there, lazy jacks, nice sail bag, easy to get to by standing on the roof. This is all anti-slip, of course, plenty of room for solar panels, a good handhold all the way around the boat. So you can basically, in heavy weather, either uh, uh, rig a jack line or uh, rely on this handhold. Some of the some of the owners have actually installed a rain catchment system because this is really just a, a rail, a groove, and um, with a drain. So you can attach a hose to the drain and lead it into your tanks. Here we have your cleats, very nicely engraved with the Neil logo. So walking onto the trampoline, this is your arrangement forward, your twin headstays, Genoa and, and stay sail, and uh, your anchor windlass that you can operate with your foot or, or with a remote control. Here's your anchor locker where you can see the anchor. You, can see, you don't have to guess where is my chain, is it bunching up on me. Super easy access to the windless engine. This, of course, is a watertight bulkhead, as you can see. Very, very safe boat. Because I think a lot of people don't realize the the safety of having watertight compartments. I mean, yes, we we hear about the Titanic, and that these compartments were not fully fully reaching towards the ceiling, so water could come into the next compartment. This boat, unlike any catamaran has or monohull, has more watertight compartments per length than any other sailboat. Period. So this is um, this boat has, I think it has six watertight compartments. The um, the forty seven right here. This boat has eight. Uh, uh, your regular catamaran. If you look around, all these catamarans here. Uh, Lagoons, uh, Bali's, Nordetex, they have uh, four of this length. So this is, this is a huge safety factor. And uh, you have, of course, crash, crash bulkheads here as well. So moving aft, uh, this boat has, is equipped with two forward cabins, of which this one was uh, basically just a storage, it's just a storage compartment. And this cabin here has been uh, converted into a berth. Very simple, I don't think it has been decorated yet, but you can see here, you know, it's a, it's a big single berth. Uh, very simply uh, uh, equipped with a light, a fan, a window. 
with a little vent, a solo, a solo vent. So we close this and we're moving aft into the cockpit. Here, very nice access step to the roof. So you can access the, the roof from both sides. Moving aft, here you have your winches for the, um, for the Code Zero. And your aft platform, where usually you can hang your barbecue from here. And also, also this is the bathing platform. This is a very substantial ladder that comes down at least three rungs underneath the water line. So it's, it's, it's very comfortable to um, get out of the water. Here you have, again, the um, fully enclosure. On a day like today, you definitely need it. This is a storage compartment right here. It's a nice little feature because this is a hatch that you can open and close. So if it rains, it doesn't come into the, um, into the cockpit. So this is in an open position right now where you just duck slightly and come into the, into the compartment. And so here you see basically the beautiful salon. I mean, for a 43 foot boat, this is pretty, um, substantial and it could be raining very hard and I'd be standing here completely dry this is your cockpit table of course the cushions go around here they're not they're not installed yet this is your access door you can actually open this door when the dinghy is not there and access the outside but there's also a door here of course um, and this is the steering station again. Okay, so here we are again on the 43. I'm going to do a little inside walkthrough right now. We have uh, the sliding door or window open here on this side, and it's open on this side. So you can, you can appreciate the expanse of the boat from this perspective. Uh, pretty substantial, as I said, again, for... Uh, a 43 foot boat that has this performance level. This is your mass compression post. To give you a little overview, this is your L-shaped settee that can be transformed to a um, to a berth. You know, you could opt, to, opt for the table here that could go up and down. This is your access to the technical room. This is your head and shower, your galley, and your nav station forward. Forward is a another sleeping compartment. This is your main master sleeping compartment. And then here you have another double berth. So let's start. So we talked about the um, uh, settee area. Let's let's uh, check out the head right here. Also it can be very practically used as a day head. So for anyone who's sailing on this boat, uh, they don't have to go through the master suite or into the hull. It's all on the same level where basically have the shower, sink, and a head with some storage behind the curtain. So very practical, very clean. You have an overhead hatch for ventilation and uh, access to here to the winches. So there's also an access hatch right there and right there. So these three hatches allow you access to the steering cables as well as the um, as the uh, the winches. Okay, let's go into the yeah. This is a door. So this is a door, which basically closes off the master suite or the master compartment. You also have a, um, a jalousie or blinds that you can lower as well as a curtain. So this is a glass wall. Right? This is glass or plexiglass. So this gives you privacy, but visually opens up the room. We can actually film inside here. So this is your master suite or master bedroom. But let's actually walk into it. So this is your, this is the table that that hasn't been mounted yet with the two pedestals that actually mount on the, um, in the salon. So here you have the perspective that you would have. These are the blinds that we closed. So imagine you're being in a, in a beautiful lagoon and, instead of looking outside at this, at this rainy weather. We have here a um, storage compartment back here. 
a big carry-ons. You can even put a huge, you know, two or three carry-ons there. Hanging, hanging uh, locker or compartment and side shelves. You know, nice hidden lights and a big bed. This bed is a queen size bed. Reading lights, opening hatch, fan, light. And this is your um, bulkhead stiffener. These are your uh, screens that you can lower. So this is a very nice, comfortable bedroom. Again, I'm six foot two and I have at least, well, I would say this much above my head, headroom. Your stove oven, storage everywhere, drawers, nice big working area, deep uh, double sink with hot and cold running water. This I always love. This is your little garbage compartment that French boats usually have. I like this contrasting gray. This is a hatch that opens and closes and separates this forward compartment, which actually we can actually film right now. Look at this. Look at the size. Look at the, the clean open space. You have an overhead hatch right there. So ventilation you have. And then plenty of, of storage here underneath the bed, on the sides, and in these big niches. So you can completely close this area off by the sliding hatch. Here's your refrigerator freezer. And now we come to the, um, to this is the nav area. So this huge bench, you know, three people can sit here enjoying a 360 degree view. So in bad weather, this is like the choice spot to sit. And I'm sitting now here filming 360 degrees. And we end up here at the, um, at the um, various breakers. Here you have your main battery switches. This is your voltmeter. This is your charge controller and inverter. 12 volt outlet, stereo system, B and G VHF. This is your generator. This boat has a Panda generator. Um, your VHF handset. This is your transmitter AIS on and off. And here you have the nice light switches and of course the obligatory compass. And uh, then we have here the um, another double bed, queen size on the main deck and there's a new option here so you see this rail here with the curtain we now have a an option that actually separates this with a plexiglass panel very similar to the owner's suite there with a shade that you can actually um, uh, fold down nice little boulon storage uh, compartments and little satchels that you can put your various laptops, phones, chargers, sunglasses, your favorite book in there, reading lights in the back. Of course, these are the pillows that go on the outside. These are the pillows that go on the outside salon table. So it's a very efficient, clean boat. Uh, you have here an opening uh, port light as well as there in the owner's bedroom. And of course, access here to the, to the uh, electronics. Uh, this boat has a um, the optional flexi teak, and now we're gonna go into one of my favorite areas, which is the technical room. So this area here contains all the the uh, the technical compartment, inverter, water heater. Uh, you could hide. Easily, you could hide here three people. Sorry, there's no light. Uh, I didn't find the light switch, but you can imagine. You can have a whole workshop in here. And uh, all the weights are centered. Easy access for maintenance, um, which is often neglected just because of the fact that it's things are so difficult to access on a regular boat, even on a catamaran. Everything is hidden 
in bilges in the hull, but uh, this really makes it a joy to to maintain your boat. And, and a well-maintained boat usually is a, and a well-used boat is a, is a good boat that will give you very little headache. Yeah, and this concludes the, um, the tour of the um, Neil 43, the new Neil 43. It's uh, maybe one of my favorite small, well, mid, mid to small size uh, cruising multi-hulls because it's, it's very affordable. It has more room than an equivalent performance catamaran. It will outsell a performance catamaran of the same length, also a monohull. It would go upwind as well as a good monohull. It's the safest boat, I feel, for its length. Um, because of the bulkheads, it's the most stable boat. Of course, that's self-explanatory because of, of its beam. I think it's a boat that is probably one of the easiest boats to single hand, just because of my previous um, discussion of the steering station, the location of all the controls, the visibility. Uh, and also, I think the, the loads are kept in um, in relative uh, check. So it's it's a it's a... I think it's a very successful Mark Lombard design. Thank you very much for watching.